Hello YouTube and welcome to another review and this time we have Airfix's 132 scale SES brackets special air service. This set came out in 1983. Anyone who remembers its release uh, was well talked about at the time. Airfix had gone bankrupt basically two or three years prior to that and General Mills took them over. And Airfix around about this time released a number of new sets. And the 132 sets were probably round about the best. The 172 sets they released mimicking the sets in the 132 suffered from a lack of pauses really. But the 132 sets like Modern Russians, uh, Modern Americans and this set were actually very good. And uh, unfortunately I think Airfix basically their demise was unstoppable and they failed again after these sets. But it is a good set this one. And likewise so were the other sets in 132. Look at the box art. It's, you know, it's nothing amazing. We know what we're pretty much getting here. We've got special air service troopers in their black counter-revolutionary warfare outfits. And this is reminiscent of the 1980 Iranian embassy siege at Princess Gate, London, where... 22 SES B Squadron Pagoda Team Operation Nimrod attacked the embassy and killed pretty much there were six terrorists five were killed one was taken prisoner uh, the mission was hailed as a success and the SES went on to become even more of a legend than they already were really and um, everybody pretty much wanted to join the SES so um, they've had a really long sort of history, the SES, the roots obviously, I can't go into too much detail, we'll be here all night, but the roots started in World War II in the desert where they did get a, a reputation for being utterly ruthless and in the 1980s that continued there in Northern Ireland, Gibraltar, uh, the Falklands War and certainly the Iranian Embassy Siege. The 1980s were very busy for the SES, there's no doubt about that and um, they're still going strong today but this set deals with the 1980 embassy siege and this is what we're going to look at today uh, artworks not amazing i wouldn't exactly call it fantastic but you pretty much get an idea of what you're getting there it's got a nice actual size figure on the front and yeah, and what you see on there is pretty much what you're going to get. So that's one good thing. Another picture of what they look like on the on the side there. Rear of the box, we have a nice picture there of um, basically how to apply your paints. Um, these are quite well painted and they look very, very good. Quite impressed with that. Uh, they've painted the base white or grey there, 64. If you know your humble paints, you'll know what that is. Um, and down the bottom here, we've got lovely row of figures showing you what you get in the box. So I think that's really good. I quite like that. So well done, Airfix, on that. That looks really good. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So nice, nice box. Comes with the usual bag. Uh, so this is very good. I have to say the box is in extraordinary condition mainly because I ordered this through eBay and it's quite hard to get hold of this set. You will pay above average what the normal Airfix figures are costing and you'll pick up a set for about five or six quid. This will probably cost you double if not more. So um, everybody is either after this set or they just haven't made enough of them. It's one of the two. Uh, this set was never released in 172, so I'll get that out of the way now. Um, and part of the reason, I think, was just the money and the sort of continued problems Airfix was having at that time. Obviously, Hornby have them now. Hornby haven't got such issues, not as far as I'm aware anyway, but there you go. So, let's have a look at the figures. Now, here we go. So this is an SES guy who's got his MP5. I will say on these sets, every figure, the MP5 looks slightly oversized. If another point as well, there's no torch on the top, which 
Uh, this is an Iranian embassy siege set, that is without question, and there's no torch on top of the MP5, but that's a minor detail. He's got his rope there, obviously the rope was used for an abseil team, there was a red team and a blue team. He's got his flashbang grenade ready, which gives off, the SES developed these grenades, they just threw them and it let off a brilliant bright flash as well as a loud bang which would pretty much subdue any sort of um, terrorists or whatever you were after and give the SES enough time to get in there and shoot them dead. Here he's got also got a radio, although I think they use throat mics and obviously a flashbang on his uh, jerkin there, his flak vest. Probably around about this position here there was actually a knife and it was uh, used by RAF aircrew for cutting their parachute. It was a Mark III aircrew release knife for Rogers and uh, that would be actually where that grenade was so a little minor detail, nothing major. Uh, mask is the obviously the S6 NBC gas mask which you see most NATO troops would wear. We know about the Heckler and Koch, this was pretty much uh, the golden payday for German armaments because the SES used this rifle, uh, rather machine gun, and uh, that was it basically. Uh, Heckler and Koch MP5 became worldwide knowledge. But the SES used them because ultra-reliable, although one did jam on the actual operation. That's just a hold all and that would have um, probably cable ties for the prisoners, um, maybe a mini first aid kit in there and maybe an extra flashbang. Uh, there's his Browning automatic pistol which the SAS used right through the 80s, 70s, 80s and here is MP5 mags. So not bad detail is pretty good. Nothing really amiss here, that looks pretty good, I'm quite happy with that. What I will say, it was actually 22 SAS that were involved in the Iranian embassy siege. Now stay with me on this because there is 21 SAS, there's 22 SAS and there's 23 SAS. Now 21 SAS have an A, C and E squadron. 22 SES have A, B, D, G squadrons and 23 have B, D, G squadrons. Um, the terminology of squadrons is during World War II the SES called themselves squadrons just to confuse the Germans. Uh, they probably thought they were talking about fighter planes or whatever if they ever heard any communications at the time. So squadrons basically a troop and uh, these guys would be made up of certain sections within the squadron. You'd have a boat troop, you'd have an air troop, you'd have a mobility troop and you'd have a mountain troop. Uh, there's also an R squadron which is made up of reservists. Um, not as in territorials, there is a territorial unit but reserves as in older members who've retired um, and they're probably always on call so that's what that pretty much means. Yeah, so quite happy with that figure. He's not bad. And probably the pose is pretty much appropriate, really. I quite like the way he's holding his MP5. Although, like I say, I do think it's slightly oversized. And here we go. Now he's looking pretty mean and nasty. He's going straight in, firing his gun. Again, we've got rope. We've got a flashbang and we've got a radio, we've got his browning, we've got his hold all on the back and his MP5 mags. Again, not a bad piece. So quite liking what I've seen already. That's pretty good. He's pretty solid on the base. They do stand quite well. Now this chap here, now he actually, his ankle is very very thin and as a result he can bend 
quite easily and probably snap. I think this would eventually snap. So you have to be very careful with this figure. He will snap if you're not careful. But he's a nice figure. He's really running. You know, so it's got good action in it. You know, which is really, really quite good. And I quite like that figure. Just like I say, his ankle is a little bit on the skinny side. And even from the front, he looks pretty good. It's quite awkward for figures to come out or okay front on when you're in this sort of position. But this one actually works. MP5 mags. Rope. Goes a little bit strange at the back here. And that might require a little bit of drilling out. MP5 doesn't look as big on this chap. But... Um, like I say, they still don't look uh, small, these these weapons, so uh, I think there's a little bit of a detail issue there. But all in all, he's not bad. And what the SES were doing was known as counter-revolutionary warfare. They were the pioneers in this. Um, lots of countries, certainly after the 1980 embassy siege, came up and said, Hey, you know, what the heck are you guys doing? We want to know more. Uh, I think they helped the Germans out, GSG-9, and uh, a few other incidents. So, you know, they're always, always helping out other NATO countries with how to do things. Yeah, I mean, he looks, you know, the head looks a little bit smaller from being uber-critical. The gun, again, looks quite large. Again, I don't know what that is, unless it's a, some sort of mini frame charge or it's a radio. But like I say, I'm pretty sure they had throat mics even back then in the 80s. Again, this is pretty much correct. All the items along here are pretty much correct. This was originally released in 1983. It's not bad. Quite good front ways on. I don't know of any other set on the SES apart from Caesar, but it's a 172 set. But yeah, I think that's that's quite a good pose. Yeah, quite nice. Yeah, nice figures. Nice colour to the plastic. I think I've done this guy already. Some of them look quite similar. But again... Quite good. Yeah, he's taking a proper shot, so that looks like he really is taking out a terrorist in that one. Incidentally, there was no counter set to this, so there was. FX never released a, a terrorist set at all. Um, and obviously, the, the terrorists were actually DRFLA. Um, and they were Iranian terrorists. And like I say, one of them I think only got out of prison not so long ago. And the others were shot dead. The mission was hailed as a great success. And that was Operation Nimrod. And this guy must be the officer, um, he's having a little look through his binoculars. He has got his gas mask on, I don't know whether it's possible to look through binoculars that well with the gas mask on, but um, you know, Salavi, what would you do in nuclear war if you wanted to 
look far away so they must be able to do it and again it's good detail on the MP5 it's just I think it's just a little bit large it's just a tad large yeah I mean it's a shame there's not many Cold War sets of soldiers out there really airfix probably led the way there um, and you know if they reboxed everything put Cold War on them they could use them you know um, there's some still some good sets which haven't been re-released <coughs> British infantry German infantry Cold War you know they, they'd be brilliant because um, they're quite well detailed they really are good sets those ones uh, the Russian infantry as well. I mean, you know, they could release those, but I don't think they have. Like I say, it's just the same guy. You've seen him already. So, I'll group these together and I'll show you what it's all like. So here we have 22 SAS B Squadron Pagoda Team Operation Nimrod and that's the full collection there from Airfix. I don't think it's a bad set at all. There's nothing else to compare it with so this is the leader. Yeah I mean there's not a lot to say really. This set's been around for a long time. 1983 it was released and it's still going strong and it's quite difficult to get hold of. The plastic is quite bendy and like I say probably you could lose the tips of the Heckler and Koch weapons. The ankle on the runners is very weak so that could snap. Um, but I got these on eBay and I think they came from Germany. They seem to be all coming from Germany the ones that I looked at and it was well packaged. You can see the box is immaculate. It's lovely because it was properly packed. If I'd got it on Amazon it would probably be crushed because they love shoving it through the letterbox. Um, but this is the 1980 Iranian Embassy Siege SES Special Air Service 132 scale figure set from Airfix. And I'll give it a thumbs up and I mean because there's nothing else out there to compare it with. And I don't think there probably will be to be honest. Uh, but not a bad set and it did like I say Airfix cashed in on the whole romantic image of the SES, their ruthfulness, their utter dedication to duty, their amazing missions that they've all been on the Falklands, um, Northern Ireland and things like this, I mean, you know, in World War II. So, I mean, the Iranian embassy siege really catapulted the SES into the public limelight and a lot of toy makers cashed in, Action Man, Stroke, G.I. Joe. There was SES outfits for that and you know this is no exception. So that was my review of Airfix's SES and uh, not a bad set at all. Only shame is there's not a counter set to uh, to put them with but Celavi you can't have everything. So thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye.